Good morning everybody, this is Dana. Welcome back to my channel. And today's project is going to be this super cute paper bag album. Now, I will tell you that I use these. I'm just trying to find the packaging. Here we go. Okay, I made this little album. Let me push this aside. That's what we're gonna use today. I made this little album for my craft fair last year. I sold out of these and I was so surprised because they were, I think I charged about $6 for them. And, um, and I was super surprised to sell out of kind of a, you know, at my craft fair, most of my stuff was one, two and $3. Um, I had a couple of, I had one or two items that were $5 and this one that was $6. Um, so I was surprised to sell out of them, but it just is, it's super, super cute. And I'm not doing a craft fair this year, but I know some of you are. So I wanted to show this idea while you still had time to make it if you wanted to. And all this is, is paper bags. Um, I chose red for this one that I got at Dollar Tree. And um, so what I want to do, and the biggest tip that I have for you about these that I think helped in selling out of them is, let me just open this up and show you. This one is decorated. And that's my biggest tip, is I had, I think I had made about 10 to 15 of them. And then I took one of them and actually put pictures in it and journaled in it, okay? So it's all done with pictures of my family and journaling card um, that I journaled in. And um, I think this really helped most every, and I put it with the um, stash of bags for sale. And I just think it really helped for people to see um, it all decorated and what they could do with it and how easy it was. These are just little pullouts um, that go in each pocket of the bag. And the other tip and the thing that is great about this particular album is the photo mats that I put in are six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So no cropping of pictures required. So your um, customers that buy it, it's that easy to um, decorate this album because they do all they have to do is print their pictures, their four by six pictures, lay them down in the photo mats, including on the inserts, there's photo mats on those, and just write, journal in the journaling spots. Okay, so it's easy for them to do as a gift. And I think that is what made this such a great seller. Um, was that it was easy to use anybody not even you don't have to be a scrapbooker or anything to use it um, and to make it look nice so um, and then having this um, already filled out um, to, to show them how easy it is really helped as well so I did sell out of those so I wanted to show you i had all my ones that i made for my craft fair were christmas themed so that's what i did for those and we're going to make today one that's not christmas themed so you can see how that looks so the first thing that you're going to need is these bags that you can get at dollar tree and they come in all different colors today we're using pink and they're a dollar for eight of them and you're going to need six of them for this project so what I have, I'm gonna give you all the cutting measurements first, okay? So I have six bags, six paper bags. We're gonna use pink today, super cute. The next thing I have are the inserts for the pockets, okay? And these measure seven and a half by four and a half, and I edge punched one edge of them. Hi, honey. Can you turn your phone off? I'm filming. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so you'll need um, you'll need six of them, and I edge punched the edge of them. You'll need mats, 
solid mats. I used solid colors for my inserts and my front and back cover mat, okay? The front and back cover mat mats are six and a half by four and a half. You need two of those, one for the front, one for the back. We already talked about those. And then you'll need in your matching solid cover, and I'm using navy blue on these, and I'll show you where we're going to use these. These are our small mats. These measure two and one quarter by four and three eighths. Okay, and you also need six of those. Okay, that's all of our solid color. Now, printed, these are going to be our photo mats. So choose your paper pack that you're going to use. I have this fly that will not leave me alone. So choose which paper pack you're going to use. Um, for this one that we're putting together today, I am using die cuts with a view, navy florals. This is actually just beautiful. I got this at Tuesday morning last year. Gorgeous paper pad. I just love it. And this will be my first project really getting to use it. So I'm excited. Okay, so we're going to need photo mats. Our photo mats measure six and a quarter by four and a quarter. You are going to need a total of, let's see, 14. You'll need 14 photo mats that are six and a quarter by four and a quarter. Now what I did was I chose seven papers from the paper pad and I cut two mats out of each paper. Okay, so we have that. Then what I have done is I've just gotten some ephemera here, just some flowers and butterflies that match that I might want to use to decorate with. I've got three journaling cards that I cut out from the paper pad. I'm going to be using those, so we will need three journaling cards. You could also use, if your paper pad that you're using doesn't have any journaling cards, most of them do. Um, you can use Project Life cards, those work as well. If you don't have those and you're using single-sided paper, the paper pack that I'm using today is double-sided, but the paper pad I used for this one um, was single-sided and I did not have any journaling cards in those paper packs and I also didn't have any Christmas Project Life cards so what I did was I simply cut out of the card stock um, from the paper pad let me find my ruler so I can measure this for you I cut out three that were three inches three by four and they're just so pretty out of the paper pad and then they're white on the back because they're single sided so that's just a ready made journaling card so if you don't have that just use your single sided papers because those work just as well. So I have three journaling cards and then I've gone through the paper pad on the sentiment sheet with the journaling cards and I just chose something that I might want on the cover. Okay let's get started. So I've got my bone folder here and we're going to take our paper bags and what we're going to do is we're going to on the side that has the flap we're going to fold that in on itself just like this. We're not trimming these bags at all. We're just going to fold that over and we're going to bone fold it smooth that crease down really good and we'll do that to all six bags. I have to tell you, I was really surprised when these sold out. Um, I kind of put them together because I thought they would be cute and I'm a memory keeper. I like to um, memory keep in my traveler's notebooks. I like to make little albums, um, things like that. And I like to give them away too. I make a lot of little albums and I give them to friends on their birthday. And a lot of times I'll fill it with pictures. I'll go on their Instagram or their Facebook page and I'll print pictures that are cute of their family or something like that. And I'll fill the album and then decorate it and give it to them as a gift. Because most people don't paper craft. They don't um, scrapbook and things like that. And their pictures just sit on their phones. And so it's a great gift to give somebody an album. I'm just gonna take my wet glue here 
And this little flap here that is open, we're just gonna glue that shut. We're just gonna glue these down so they're not flapping around causing us trouble. So we'll just fold those down. So they're great gifts to give people. So even if you're not doing a craft fair, um, these are very simple to put together. They don't take a lot of time. And they make a big impact, and I am all about that. I'm all about a project that um, is simple but makes a big impact. And albums for people, like I said, are one of my favorite gifts to give people because most people just have, like I said, have their pictures and they just sit on their phones and, you know, sure, they scan through their phones and look at them and show them to people and things like that. But it's so nice to have a cute little album to keep your special pictures in. And every person that I've given a gift like that to absolutely loves it. And it's something that they really treasure. So if you're not... If you love to make things like this, but you've never thought of giving gifts like that to somebody, um, what a great gift. It's a great Christmas gift. Um, you could do them as Christmas gifts for people on your list. Um, and you're just using stuff from your stash and maybe buying some bags at um, Dollar Tree. Okay, so we've got all of those glued down and here's how we're gonna assemble. And you probably have all seen this and now this album I will say I'm using a tutorial from Amber over at Lyric Lover 10 on YouTube, and I will link her channel in the description box below. She is the person um, that I learned how to do this album from, and um, I am not, you know, some of my decorating might be a little different than hers, but the construction is completely her direction, so I want to give her credit for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our flaps. Let me move these out of the way so we're not confusing ourselves. We're going to take two bags and we're literally going to butt the flaps up like this. So we're putting them together like this and then these are going to come up and meet and then we're going to make a pocket out of those. So we're going to take one of them and we're going to put glue on the bottom and up the two sides like that and then I'm just gonna butt them up together like this and meet them now because paper bags aren't perfect you'll see that they don't meet completely perfectly here you can see on the corner here that's okay that is okay that does not matter it is not gonna affect things at all Okay, so now what we have is our first little page, and this will fold over like this. So we have our first page. We're gonna run and do that to each set of two. So we're gonna do that three times. So here's the next one. We'll put glue on the bottom and on both sides. and then we'll butt them up to meet together, lining up the top and bottom edges. That's what I like to do. So lining up here and here, making sure we're straight. And then however these two meet, see how it's off a little on the side? No problem. Just make sure your top and bottom edges are lined up. That's what's most important. Okay, that's the second set. And here's the last one. So we'll put them together like this. Glue down one side, cross the bottom, and up the other side. Line up the top and bottom edge and just press those flaps together. I hope I'm in frame, I haven't checked. Okay, so now what we have is three pages. Let me make sure I'm in frame for you. Yep. Good on me. <laughs> so we have three sets of pages. Now, what I typically like to do is look at the ones that look lined up the best. Do you see how this one isn't quite, I'll show you. See, isn't quite lined up right there. 
this one looks pretty good this one is perfect so I'm gonna make this one my front cover so what we're going to do is now take this and flip it over and we're gonna glue we're gonna put glue on this entire side now I'll say that you can use your ATG gun if you have one okay it's a pretty lightweight project I have not done one with an ATG um, I think Amber might use ATG on hers so you can check out her video um, but I like wet glue because I know it's gonna be strong now what I'm gonna do is take this and flip it over with my glue here and I'm gonna match up the edge, gluing these two quote unquote signatures together. And I'm making sure that my spine is nice and straight. And however the rest of it falls is the, how it falls. But I want my spine to line up really nice. Okay. So now we have a nice straight spine that's all even. Okay, and now you guessed it. We're going to now glue this to the last one. So I'm just gonna cover this back side with glue. Get my thumb in here so I can hold it. There we go. Alright, there we go. And now I'm just going to line this one up, lining up the spine where the spine's nice and straight and lined up. And then folding the rest of the bag over into that glue. Okay, and that is the basic construction. It is that easy not difficult at all so here's what we have we have our cover page here with a pocket here's our smaller page where our journaling cards are going to fit in and that's what we made these little mats for that's how those are going to go and then we have two bags stuck together here that make two pockets we have another little spot for a journaling card or memorabilia then we have another section, oh, I got some glue there. Another section with two bags. And I do recommend that you go ahead and go through your construction. Make sure everything is kind of separate and not glued together because I noticed a few pieces of mine are glued together. Okay, and that's our basic construction, super cute. Now, when you go to Dollar Tree to pick up these bags, they have them in all kinds of colors. So. I mean, pretty much any paper pad you have, it will look really nice. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to, I'm gonna take um, these little, our little smallest mats, and they're gonna go here on our little um, spaces where we're gonna put our journaling cards. So I'm just gonna glue these. And this might be a little bit of a longer video today because I thought we'd go ahead and decorate it together. Um, if you're not interested in that, you can just turn off the video. But I've watched a lot of people make albums and I'm always super interested in how they end up decorating them. I mean, watching the construction is fine, but to get ideas on decorating, I always love that because sometimes I find myself kind of doing the same thing over and over again because I'm not inspired to do anything different. And when I watch other people decorate, so we're just um, we're just laying these down so that we have a little bit of a border of the pink around. And they're cut to where you have an eighth of an inch all the way around. Okay, so you're gonna do them front and back of those little spaces. But anyway, I was saying, sometimes I find myself doing the same thing over and over again for decorating because I don't feel inspired. And um, a lot of people, when they do tutorials on YouTube for an album, they don't show the decorating process. And for me, I'm, I get super inspired. I love to see what other people do. 
and how their mind works. And you know, it's how we learn. It's how we get inspired. It's how we learn new techniques. We may um, um, see somebody use an element, um, whether it be a sticker sheet or you know whatever, and use an element in a way that we never thought of before. And so I like to leave the decorating in. It does make the um, it does make the um, I must have some spare glue here because that is just sticking. Let me see. Oh, there it is. It's right there. Okay, we'll rub that off. But like I said, it makes the um, makes the videos a little bit longer to to show all of the decorating because sometimes it can take a little bit of time. I'm going to use some things that probably won't take too much time to do because you don't on these you don't want to spend a lot of time decorating um, because uh, they are a five dollar item five or six dollars and I will say that the decorating I did here I did for my own album the ones that I sold just had the yellow mat on them I didn't do any decorating right here now you could put some stickers down or whatever um, but I just left the yellow mat there and left it plain so that they could maybe put another picture whatever they wanted to do with it so I didn't do any decorating on those other than just the front cover because, you know, you don't want to spend an hour decorating a book that you're only charging $6 for. And they still sold out, so they didn't care that that part wasn't decorated. And seeing my book gave them ideas on how they can decorate that part there. Okay, so we got all our little small mats in. Now what we're going to do is put our decorative mats on the inside of the book. Well, let me finish these. Okay, what I have is the inserts. Let's work on those. So, I've chosen, um, if you cut out two of each design, okay? So, I did two of each design of the seven papers, okay? So because there's six inserts and there's six places in here for photo mats, I put one set on the inserts and then I put the, I'm going to put the other set in the book. And then you have a spare set, which I'm putting on the front and back cover. Okay. So I went ahead and I've done all of that here. So I just have one more to do. And a little tip, in edge punching the size of insert that I gave you the measurements for, the seven and a half by four and a half, depending on the depth of your edge punch and how much paper that removes um, from the edge here, you might need to trim off um, some of your inserts. So I suggest that you put your mat, your photo mat, kind of closer to the punched edge, leaving yourself room here if you need to cut it a little bit shorter. Okay, so I've matted all of my inserts, so I've got six of them here. Now I'm going to use the other set of photo mats and I'm going to run through and lay those down here. So what I usually will do is, is go through and kind of sort what I have, okay? So I've got, this is a dark print, this is a dark print. Um, these both have white backgrounds, so I'll put those separate. Um, this is more, is lighter, so I'll put that here. And this one's just gonna go anywhere. So I like to put these on opposite pages from each other so I don't have dark and dark, okay? So and right away I can see I'm gonna want this next to this because it's got this color in it, okay? So all we're going to do is just put glue on the back of our photo mat. And then we're gonna kind of center it here on the page. 
and we're just going to glue that down. Do the other side. These are so easy. If you just cut everything ahead of time, it just takes no time to put them together. Just center that. I like to center it top and bottom and then look at the left and right margin to see if I've got the same amount of space. And now that will fit a four by six picture without cropping it. Let's turn to the next page. Let's see what we have here. Let's see, let's do this one. And you can use the back side if you want. If you're using a double sided paper, if you can't find two that you think that look really good together, you can just flip it over, see what's on the other side. I hear my dog whining. <laughs> my puppy wants underneath the table with me and he's whining at the other doggy because he's blocking his way. Let's see here. Um, I think I'm going to want these two together on the last page, so I'm going to put this one over here. Okay. I'll center this on. What a great gift for a grandma to give her for Mother's Day or her birthday with pictures of her grandkids in it. Hey, stop it. Hey, Dusty. Okay, and the last two. That's so pretty on that pink. And see how these bags just are not all lined up and they look kind of wonky and stuff? The book looks fine, don't worry about it. Don't get caught up with stuff like that. It just, especially on a project where it, you know, they're paper bags so they're not gonna line up perfect. So don't get hung up on trying to make them line up perfect because it really looks fine. Okay, I'll get that in there like that. Okay. Nice. And now we'll run through and put our um, inserts into the pockets. Now what I like to do is use the back part of the pocket. So let's see how these look and see if we need to trim them at all. Okay, that's a little long. So let's put this one aside. As you get toward the middle of the album, the covers, they kind of don't sink as far in. See, those look okay. Toward the middle of the book, they go down further because the covers have are more kind of folded in. So those actually look okay. Let's see how these do. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, those look okay, but I think the front and back cover ones need to be trimmed a little bit. Let's take a look. Let's put this one in here. Yeah, okay. So the front and back cover ones, let's just bring our paper trimmer in and just trim those just a little bit. So I'm just going to take off maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch. I think I'll start with a quarter of an inch because I think it really needs it. So let's take a quarter of an inch off the side of those. And let's see how they fit now. It should be good enough. And that's why I wanted to put those... Um, uh, photo mats further toward the top where the punched edge was so that you had room to trim them if you needed to. Okay, see now it fits perfect. Let's put this one in. 
to the back. Yep, now they're all lined up perfect. Okay, now before we put, we have all our insides in, we have our inserts in the pockets. Now before we do anything else, we need to put our ribbon on. Um, now what I've done is taken my um, six and a half by four and a half solid cover front and back mats and I've matted the um, printed uh, photo mat that's six and a quarter by four and a quarter on them. Okay, isn't that beautiful? Love that paper. Okay, so I have those ready to go. Now, before we put those on, we want to lay our ribbon down because this is gonna get sandwiched over our ribbon closure like that. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna use my half inch ATG gun. If you don't have one of these, you can use wet glue. Wet glue will work perfect. I'm gonna turn my book vertical in front of me like this and I'm gonna eyeball the center. And then I'm gonna lay a strip of my tape down. Looks like my tape gun is running out. Darn it, okay, so I'm gonna lay Fabri-Tac down. Now, Fabri-Tac will show through this ribbon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go all the way to the edges of it. Um, if you see my photo mat is gonna go here, I'm gonna make sure I stop with my Fabri-Tac short of where my cover's gonna hit so that you don't see um, so you don't see that through the ribbon. And that Fabri-Tac has not been opened. I'm gonna need to find my other bottle here that's almost empty. Here we go. And it's all yucky, yuck. Blech. Okay. So I'm gonna run a bead of Fabri-Tac just right down the center here. My daughter was using this and she did not lay it on its side. When it gets low, I always store it on its side so it's not so hard to get out. And I'm gonna stop right about here. That way it doesn't show through my ribbon. Now I'm gonna take my ribbon. This is about, it's about 33 or 34 inches of ribbon. You'll need that to go all the way around and leave yourself room to tie a bow. Okay, I'm gonna find the right side of my ribbon here. I'm gonna fold it in half, finding the center here like this, okay? Now, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put my finger right here where the center is. And I'm gonna lay my fingers up next to the spine and I'm gonna put my ribbon in my glue. And if you do it that because we have our spine to take into consideration. So if I'm holding it at the center like this and putting my finger on the spine, then I know this part of the ribbon is going to lay against the spine. And then my ribbons coming out the front and back are going to be fairly even. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now I'm going to run more. And here I was talking about my daughter and I didn't put it up on its spine. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run some more Fabri-Tac here. And then I'm gonna take the ribbon and I'm gonna lay it down in that glue. Okay, so this is my back, this is my front. I think, yes. So this is my back. So what I'm gonna do is just put my back on. I'm gonna take one piece here. I'm gonna run glue. And then I'm gonna center it over the ribbon and you should have a nice even border all the way around and press that down. And that seals our ribbon closure on. And doesn't that look pretty? And I'm not gonna do anything else to the back. That's it, that's all I'm doing is just putting that on there. 
And now we'll lay the front on. Getting glue all the way around. So we want that nice and sealed down. And I'm gonna center it over the front. Just like that. Okay, and that's what we have so far. All right, now to decorate, let me pull in. I'm not going to do any super fancy decorating. I thought butterflies and flowers just because um, that's what's in our book. Well, not butterflies, but flowers. So I've just pulled stuff from, I've got a whole bin of just little pieces of flowers that I've fussy cut out of things and butterflies that I've fussy cut and I've got a whole collection. So I pulled ones that I thought that would look cute on here. And all I'm going to do is kind of glue those down. Um, I mean, super simple. With this navy paper here, they're going to pop really nice because I left a white edge. Now, another nice thing that you could do here is you, if your paper pad has either a paper or um, sometimes they don't have just journaling cards. They'll have, um, how about a butterfly? Maybe right here. Sometimes they'll have a little kind of odd um, cutout pieces. I've used those and I did do another book that I'm going to show you here at the end and you'll see that how I used those in there. Okay and that looks really cute and I'm going to come back and probably fill this in with gems or sequins things like that. Well I can show you let's see I have my little sequin bin here and let's see here um I think some pink let's pull some pink sequins and maybe some light blue sequins and maybe even some kind of lighter gold sequins pull some of those out and we'll see what we like but i think right here let's just put like little dots of glue maybe one in the corner over here and That just kind of dresses it up a little bit. Gives it a little sparkle. I like all my stuff to have a little bit of sparkle to it. Okay. Oh, that's not going to stay down. Let me put another thing of glue. It stuck to my finger and I pulled it up so then it wouldn't use all the glue. So there we go. Okay, and on this side, I think we might just put maybe some butterflies. Maybe if I did a butterfly here. Just giving you some ideas. It doesn't have to be complicated, but of course, you can make it as complicated as you want. Maybe put another butterfly up here. And we'll just put some random sequins here. And I think I'll use all pink instead of doing various colors. Now you could also, another idea is to leave um, these pages blank and use them for journaling. A white gel pen on this navy blue paper would be super pretty. Okay, and now let's stick one of our journaling cards in here. We'll put this one. And that just sticks in there just like that, and that page is done. Cute, right? Okay. 
let's see, I would like to use this, and I think that's all I'm going to use on there other than a couple of sequins, because like I said, I like to have my sparkle. And something like this that kind of takes up the whole space is really nice. That's really pretty. And so we'll go here and maybe here and hmm, maybe right here. Odd numbers are kind of the best to use. Um, should I do blue? Let's see. There's a lot of blue. I think I'm going to use pink again. I like the color of those pink sequins. It's really kind of a pale pink. It's really pretty. Okay. So there we go with that one. Super pretty. Very simple. And now let's see this side. Let's do some... We'll just... I think we'll do with the flower and then the butterfly theme. So we use these little ones. I like these little ones. They're really cute. And then I have this kind that's a little different. You could do anything here. You could put lace on these pages. That would be really pretty. The possibilities and the things you can do are just endless on a little canvas like this. All right. <clears throat> so where are we going to put our sequins here? I think we'll go one, two, and three. When you're putting things on, and we definitely need pink on this one because it's like all blue on this. Um, when you're doing little like embellishments and stuff, odd numbers um, are really kind of the best. It's what suits the eye best as far as artistically. So I always will do three. Okay, so there we have that one. Let's put a journaling card in. Let's use this one because this is a lot of blue and pink here. So let's use this one. Put that journaling card in there. So that's what we have. There's the back. And the last one. Let's see what flowers we have here. I've got this really pretty one. This one's a Tim Holtz one. And really, I don't think it needs much more than that. That's really pretty. So let's put that down. So you see how fast this can go. We'll just center that on there. I think we'll use gold on here. So we'll go one, two, and three. Let's use our gold sequins. I love using sequins because they're glittery, shiny, well maybe not glittery, but they're definitely shiny and blingy, and they're cheap. They're not expensive. You can find them at the Dollar Tree. All right, there we go for that one. Very simple, but doesn't need to be... Um, and you can even write in the little spaces, you can write a little phrase or something there. Okay, and the other side, we were going to do butterflies, but I've only got one kind of butterfly left. So I think we'll put this last flower I've chosen. And then one butterfly. Dusty, stop it. Quit growling. So we'll put that here at the bottom. And let's see what size butterfly we want. Do we want a big one? Or do we want a small one? I think the small one. So let's get that put on there. And we'll do all three colors sequins on here. So we'll put 
one here, one here, and maybe one over here. And again, there's room to write a little caption or something, anything you want to do. There's plenty of room for that in between the spaces here. If you want to fill that space up, say my fingers are all gluey and I picked that up again. I'm going to need to put more glue. I hate it when I do that. Urgh. There we go. All right. So that's all of our flaps. And we'll put our last journaling card in from the paper pad. And now we just have the cover. Now, what I've done is I have all my scraps over here to the side from cutting my papers. And I want to put this on the cover. And I think really all I'm going to do is mat this. This is such a busy paper. I don't think I really need a whole lot here. Maybe I'll put one of my butterflies on. Oh, maybe I'll do that. Okay, so I think though that it might look pretty matted onto this yellow just to contrast it a little bit. So what I'm going to do, let's move this aside. So what I'm going to do is just, this is me. I don't measure and cut mats of smaller things that I'm doing like this. So I'm in the middle of decorating a cover um, because I just like, I don't want to sit and have to measure everything. So what I do is I just match it up with the the size border I kind of want around it, like that. And if I could find my scissors, they're all over the place here. My kids have been at my craft desk. Oh goodness, where are my scissors? <laughs> I can't find a single pair of scissors. Hang on just a second. Here they are, they're way over here. And so then what I do is I just kind of eyeball the mat and then I just cut straight up. And I keep my eye on the edge of my scissors and the edge of my image to make sure I'm straight. There. And that's how I do it. That's, that's Dana's simple way. <laughs> of doing it. So see where we want to put this down because I do want to use this butterfly. I think it's cute. Maybe right there. So I'm going to leave the butterfly there so I know where I want to put this. And I'm just going to glue this down. right there. Make sure I've got the same amount of space on these three sides. And then I'll glue my butterfly down. Right here. Oh, that's so cute. I was going to put some sequins on, but I don't think it needs it. I'm not sure where I would put them. There's really not space, so I'm going to move those over to the side here. And then this just ties in a bow like this, so let's flip through and see what we have. So we have our first, our cover, and this open like this with our insert. And then we have this. This page has a double pocket. And this. Our another double pocket all kinds of stuff can go in there because you've got a ribbon closure. So you can stuff the pockets full if you want to. Your ribbon's still going to keep it closed. And that's what we have. So this just ties up in a bow on the side. And there we go. Okay, so let me show you the other one that I made. So of course I showed you the Christmas one. And then we have this one. And then I made another one out of, it's called, it's a recollections paper pad. Um, and it's called Grace. 
I love this paper pad, very pretty. So this is what this one looks like. I put a purple ribbon and these were from where it, this was a paper pad that didn't have like just journaling cards on on the one cut apart page. It had all kinds of other different things. So I utilized two pieces of that with some sequins. Okay, and I did green mats for these. Find the beauty. Some more flower stickers and sequins. This paper pad's gorgeous. Be kind. Another journaling spot. Isn't this pretty? This was from the cut apart page. This is was just a journaling card from the cut apart page that I put a flower on. This was from the journaling page and just a scrap piece of paper. And so was this from the journaling card page and a scrap piece of paper and a flower. So those are just super cute, right? So the possibilities are endless with these because you can do just endless themes with them. We've got Christmas, we have purple, we have pink. Um, and all of these were bags that I found at Dollar Tree. So let me know if you like this project, if you're going to give it a try. And as always, have a wonderful day and God bless.